to our online service today. We have come here to worship. We will lift our hearts to Jesus. We've come here to bow down. Jesus, take your rightful place in our lives. We've come here to lift high the name of the Lord, Almighty God. Touch and change our hearts and lives this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ said, This is the first commandment. The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolved to do our best with God's help to keep his commandments in the future. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy 
and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Holy Spirit all our days. Amen. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who has prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his field, another to his businesses. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready. But those I have invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite the banquet to anyone you find. So the servants went into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gashes of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Good morning, my name is Francis. I'm the curate in the Holy Trinity team. Why don't I pray for us as we begin? May I speak and may you hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many are called, but few are chosen. We all know that ignoring a invitation has consequences. Sometimes we have good reasons to ignore an invitation. For example, you're invited to a friend's house for the evening, but you can't go because you're away or you're somewhere else, you're on holiday. And your friend is understanding, says, uh, oh, well, uh, that's a shame. And everyone moves on and there's very little consequence. But there are other invitations that are harder to decline and get away with. If you receive a letter summoning you to jury service, uh, inviting you into the court to play that role, uh, you'll need a pretty good reason to get out of it, uh, otherwise you could get a fine or, or something else. So what happens when we ignore God's invitation? That is what Jesus is tackling in the parable this morning. I don't know about you, but I find it quite a difficult parable to get my head round. Uh, when you read it through um, with fresh eyes, it takes a while to, uh, to re-understand what's going on. So it's important for us to understand that this parable sits in Matthew's gospel. The Christian community that uh, Matthew was a part of um, that his gospel was written in is most likely made up of uh, Jewish Christians with some Gentile Christians. And they've probably come to a stage um, in their community's life where they've realized it seems like the majority of Jewish people uh, are not in their time are not going to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And the main barrier to this, it seems, is not in fact, the ordinary Jewish people in and of themselves, but it's their leaders, uh, the ones with authority and influence. So in the parable, Jesus tells of a king throwing a wedding feast for his son. It's fair to assume that the king is God. The wedding feast is the post-resurrection age that we live in. So the king sends out his servants, first of all in verse 3, to call the invited guests. So another bit of context here. In, the, in those days, you would um, invite a select group of people to a party and they would accept in advance the invitation. 
And then on the day of the event, you would send your servants out to go and uh, bring them in. So these invited, probably distinguished guests who had already accepted the invite, refuse once the servants turn up. RT France suggests that this group of people could have been symbolic of the Jewish ruling classes, the Pharisees and the priests, the ones with influence. By refusing the invitation after already accepting, they are showing a great insult to the king. So the king goes out and he to his sends his servants out to more people and those people are indifferent. The phrase, they took notice, can be translated as, they didn't care. They didn't care for it. They had, in their opinion, better things to do. Some even seized the servants and killed them. There have been many prophets who have come to share messages uh, from God who have been killed at the point Jesus is telling this story, he is probably thinking of John the Baptist, but of course thinking forward to his own death when the people would seize him, grab him and nail him to a cross. The king is now aware that the original invitees are against him. And so he sends out on the streets his servants think of Jesus traveling around first century Galilee and encountering the ordinary people and them following him. The parable says they invited good and bad and they all came and received the freely offered invitation. If we don't accept God's invitation he will invite someone else and notice he invites the good and the bad. This throws away any um, illusion that the church is somehow a pure, perfect group of people. No, Jesus' vision of church is a group of people who get dragged in off the streets, a ragtag bunch. So they come and then we have one final detail in the story. The one person who turns up not wearing a robe, who gets thrown out the party. And it's worth bearing in mind that a parable isn't to be taken hyper literally. God doesn't throw people out. Uh, for not having the right clothing. Even in the first century, if a king invited you to a party, you would rush home and find the best clothes you had. The person accepted the free gift of the invitation, but they didn't put in any effort other than turning up. This would have been an insult and is therefore kicked out. So, what are the applications of this parable for us? Let's take them in turn. One, if we don't accept God's invitation, there are consequences. He will find someone else. So if God is calling you today to become part of his church, and I believe that he is, then please say yes to him. If you want help to do that uh, and understand what that means, uh, Alpha begins tomorrow evening, Monday evening, 7.30, October 12th, you can sign up by going to our website, holytrinityredditch.org.uk slash courses. Secondly, the people God invites into the church are not, in relative terms, the good people. I've heard enough stories of drug dealers and criminals who have accepted Jesus into their lives. We know this. But it does mean that we as the church today need to be welcoming to all, not just to people we naturally click with. And lastly, if you've accepted God's invitation, put the effort in. We aren't saved by works, but we are saved to work. In other words, when you accept Jesus and say, yes, Lord, I love you, then your life must reflect that. A life marked by devotion to God with worship and in service. So, accept God's invitation. Welcome the good and the bad and put in the effort. Amen.
Dear Lord, today we give thanks that we have been able to offer services in the churches. We pray for the changes that are taking place. Be at our side so that we have your strength to accept the changes and work with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, be near the Queen and her ministers as decisions are made that affect all our futures. Lord, may your presence be felt by the Holy Trinity Team Ministry, Richard, Paul, Paul, a newly ordained Francis, and all those also newly ordained. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, let us give thanks for the technology that enables us to remain con connected with our family, friends, hold meetings, have services, run courses, and all other activities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those that are ill in mind and body. We pray for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those who have died. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
at the same time in the same places next Sunday. Do encourage people to come along. Alpha. Now, Alpha did get put back from its original start time, but the Alpha course is coming. October the 12th, half past seven, running right the way through the autumn. Alpha is such a useful tool to find out about the Christian faith. And there's so many people in Redditch Borough and Bromsgrove district that need to do this. There's a lot of people who call themselves Christian or might have a belief in God or who've got questions that they can't find answers to. They need this course, but they also need us to make them aware of it. Advertising only gets you so far. Personal invitation is the best way to get people onto an Alpha course. It's all online. It's available from Monday, October the 12th, half past seven. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning. No filters, just honest discussion. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your host. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready, and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha online. And so, finally, the blessing. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and to remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.